Good morning, friends. Good morning. How is everyone today? Okay, a little bit of a warning. Today's the first day of fall, so be careful. Better than first service. I mean, I should leave the jokes to Drew, right? Yeah, he says yes. Okay, a couple of announcements if you look on the back of our bulletin. Okay, this QR code situation. I'm going to try to help you out a little bit to understand it. The black QR code, when you hover your phone over that, that takes you to the app that we have. If you need to install the app, it is a step-by-step -step instruction how to do that. You set it all up, and that's how you register your whole entire family. That's more than one registration. The blue QR code takes you to the church website. You can register just for one person that way, and that's how we also do our online giving. I think I got that right. Should be clear as mud. If not, contact Mike Palmer. His information is not on here, but he might be out in the back. I'm not sure. Um, always call Ramona if you need help with registration. Something I forgot to say in first service, the reason why we do registration is because we love you. We want to know, like I sit way over here, and I don't get to see the people over here, and I might think to myself, I haven't seen Phil Westbrook in a couple of weeks. Wonder where he's at. So I can call Drew and ask Drew, and he can run a report and say, you know, he hasn't been here in about three months. And he will call him and say, well, I've been on a world tour of pickleball. I am the world-class pickleball player, and that's where I have been. So we just, that's how we keep up with each other. If you sit on one side versus the other, we want to know what's happening in your life. You know, we do it because we love each other. And, you know, if you sit way over here, you might not know that someone way over here is missing. So that's a way that Drew can also keep up with prayer requests and everything. You know, there's, there's a lot of reasons. All right, Christmas cantata practice. They are starting on Tuesday. 5.30 to 6.15 is the cantata practice. If you like traditional service worship music and want to practice with them, that's 6.15 to 7. You can do both. You need to do both. That's what I've been told. So... And even if you can't carry a tune, you are more than welcome to come. They'll just turn the microphone down. You know, they welcome all the voices. So that starts on Tuesday. Wacky. They're going to be looking for me, too. They'll turn that sucker way down. I can talk. I can't sing. That is for sure. I can sing. I can't sing well. That's the thing. All right, Wacky Wednesday. All of our traditional stuff is dinner at 530. All of our uh, stuff. Stuff for our wonderful kids, Drew's Bible study, grief support, all the normal stuff on Wednesday. But also this Wednesday at about 7.10, live nativity meeting. This is your opportunity if you want to get involved, want to know how you can help. This is the opportunity we're going to meet with Miss Courtney in the Journey Classroom. There is so much that goes on with live nativity. We would love everyone to help out. Parking lot help help clean up after the meal. There's something for everyone. I mean, just taking out the trash. You know, we'd love to have your, if you have a suggestion for something, we would love to have your input. So that's at seven, about 7.15 or so. Our Fall Fest is scheduled for October 27th. There's a big red bucket out there. We need it full of candy. You know, only, we're not only just doing trunk or treat, but we're doing all kinds of other activities. If you want to help with any of that, contact Miss Chelsea. And next Sunday, the 29th, is our final chance to have your picture made. It'll be in the room right next to the parlor, the confirmation room. She will be here from nine to noon. No appointment needed. So grab your family, grab whoever you need to. If you haven't had a chance, come dress for church on Sunday, get your picture taken and continue about your day. Then in the evening, we have a special evening worship at five o'clock, it's a picnic. Bring your own meal. If you like to cook, Cook your meal, bring it here. We're going to be sitting outside, weather permitting. If it's too hot, too many mosquitoes, we will move inside. Um, if you don't like to cook, go by Sonic, go by Dairy Queen. Come on, and we're going to have an old-fashioned just church picnic. Bring your own. Then at 6 o'clock, we're going to have just a really short and sweet, informal, small worship. So it's a good time for fellowship and um, just hanging out with each other. All right, did I miss anything? Are we good? All right, I'd like to welcome Ms. Jonna Westbrook up here for a 
a little bit of a message about something special. Good morning. Y'all are a lot more responsive than first service. Y'all are awake. Yeah, y'all, you're awake. Yeah, that's, that's the difference. Um, I'm the current facilitator for our Backpack Buddies ministry here at Wesley. Uh, Backpack Buddies has been around for a long time, um, but it kind of runs in the background, and we have a lot of new members, and we're starting a new school year, so I wanted to just take a couple of minutes to talk about it. Uh, what it does and how you can be a part of it, or even a bigger part of it if you're already a part of it. Uh, we have many students in our community that rely on free or reduced meals at school. Uh, they get lunch and breakfast free or reduced, um, and they, some people it's just, uh, it's just helpful, but other people really, really rely on that, and some of those students when school is not in session, don't have access to meals. So over weekends and holidays, when they don't have those school-provided meals, uh, they don't have anything to eat or they don't have anything to eat consistently. And so Backpack Buddies, uh, we get a number from each campus, from the counselors of how many students they have, that they've identified uh, a need for this meal service. And uh, each week we pack bags uh, with a specific number of groceries and we deliver those to the schools every Thursday so that these students who need it can pick their bag up on Friday and have that over the weekend. So each bag has two servings of some type of meat product, uh, two servings of pasta or rice, two servings of fruits, veggies, two breakfasts, two snacks, two juices, and two milk. So it's a, a pretty substantial amount of food and uh, we do try to make it mostly nutritious, which is difficult to do with it being single serve and non-perishable, but we do the best that we can, and that uh, just covers the gap over the weekends and holidays for these kids that really rely on those school meals. Um, it's an incredible ministry, and if you're thinking it's something that you want to be a part of, then I have excellent news because in each of the pews within arm reach, there should be an information sheet uh, that looks like this that has a pledge sheet attached to it that looks like this. Uh, and that pledge sheet has several different ways that you can help if you want to be a part of this ministry. Over the years, we have served anywhere from around five to 10 students. Last year we had 22. This year they recommended 30 students for the program. So um, that's the most that we've ever had. And um, the first option on that pledge is to sponsor a child for the whole year. And in order to fill these bags, it costs right at $50 per month per student to keep the bags full. So if you're able to and you feel moved to sponsor a student, that costs about $50. Um, and you can make that commitment from October to May. And we know, okay, this number of students are totally taken care of. Uh, so that's a very straightforward way of helping. If you're not able to do that, I totally understand that's a, it's, that's a, a, quite a commitment during hard financial times, I understand that. Uh, you can make monetary donations to the office, or uh, I think online also, as long as you include a memo at any time, any amount, uh, whatever you're able to or feel moved to give to help that ministry is appreciated. And then also if you want to donate food items directly, there's a box in the CLC when you first walk in to the right, it's a big wooden box and you can leave your food items there. I just um, if you go that route, if you'll read that information sheet a couple of times, because there are some guidelines as to what we can provide for the students. Um, and I said in first service, if you look at that list and you think, God, these kids are picky, it's not the kids, it's, it's logistics. Uh, some of them are five years old and we can't send them home with 47 cans and three boxes of pasta. It's just a lot for them to carry and soft things get squished and all of these things have been worked out. Uh, so if you'll look at those guidelines, we'll be sure uh, we can use everything that you're contributing for the Backpack Buddies. And then finally is, uh, is the prayer, uh, a commitment to consistently and earnestly pray for the ministry and for the students. And I put that last not because it's least important, but because it's most important. And it's something that everybody here can do, not just for this ministry, but for all our ministries and the church as a whole. Um, I think it really takes providing just a simple need to the next level. It takes food and turns it into a way to uh, lead people to Christ, and that's, that's what we're about. 
right? We had a, a, a time a couple of years ago, I was in Wacky Wednesday one night, and it was the night before I was supposed to deliver the bags uh, to the schools the next day on Thursday, and I, for whatever reason, I wasn't going to be able to do it, and so I had said in Wacky Wednesday, or in Bible study, could anybody deliver the bags for me? I can't do it this week. And this young woman who had been visiting was like, I'll do it. And I was like, okay, because she was, she was a visitor. I didn't expect a visitor to, to offer to do that. And so I went through the whole thing. This is what it is. This is why we do it. And she let me go through it all. And in the end, she was like, well, I know, I know what backpacks are. I know what backpack buddies is because I used to get backpacks when I was a kid, when, when my family was going through a hard time. And so it's mac and cheese, it's tuna, it's spam, but God takes these things and, and he uses them and he leads people to Christ. So it's a wonderful ministry to be a part of. Uh, if you want to help in any way, you can fill out those pledge cards, and if you'll just leave them in the pews, uh, I can pick those up afterwards. If you have ideas or you want to help in a way that's not on the uh, pledge card, just come see me and, and we'd be happy to have you help. Thank you. Well, as we come to this time of prayer, I know there are many things on our hearts and minds today, 
You know, one of the things that um, is the elephant in the room in, in church is we don't want to talk about the election. And I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but we are at a divisive time, in a uh, very divisive time in our country. And um, by the way, if you ask me in private, I'll tell you who to vote for, but um, <laughs> not from here, not from here. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about um, the temperature of our country right now, very concerned about the temperature of our country. And uh, I don't see that getting better, but, but prayer works. So we're going to pray. That's part of what we're going to pray for today. So let's go to the Lord. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are... We are in awe to be in your, in your presence today. We thank you for being present here. Lord, we, um, we, we come here not because we're perfect, not because we have it all figured out, but precisely because we don't and we aren't perfect. So we thank you for providing this opportunity to come together and worship you and and to keep our lives on track so that we can stay in love with you. Life is busy and we seem to go a thousand different directions during the week. And sometimes we leave you in the dust and forgive us for that. And Lord, we, as we focus on prayer this morning, we can't help but think of those who, who we know and love that are in the hospital those who are going through emotional um, emotional stress, whether it's grief or depression or anxiety. I hear more and more and more about an anxiety and people being anxious, Lord. We have a homeless population here in Mid-County in Beaumont. We lift those up who have nobody praying for them that maybe you would open a door and hopefully that they would if they haven't already that they would come to Christ and meet their Savior Lord we know you're the great physician and gentle healer and so we trust you with everyone on our prayer list and the prayer list that's on our hearts for you can hear my audible voice but you can also hear all of our cries of the, the cries of our hearts so we thank you for that. Lord, um, we are humbled by your presence. Help us to be present today as we dig into a topic that, that confuses people and is, is always a point of contention for those who oppose the Christian faith. So we thank you for being there for that. Lord, I, um, I give you such thanks for this wonderful church that we have so many wonderful ministries. We ask for the blessings of the Backpack Buddy program. And, you know, some churches would be just over the moon to have that one ministry, and we have so many great ministries like that, but that is a great one, Lord, and we just ask that you, you bless it and let, let the food multiply so that these kids can get fed and know that they're loved by you. We thank you again, Lord, for who you are, the great and almighty triune God. And today we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us during his earthly ministry. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward? Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for all the gifts you have given to us. For we know that all good things come to you. And, and you give us these gifts so that we, we have something to give back to you. Those are our tithes and anything on top of that is our offering so lord bless these tithes and offerings today as a token of our growing love for you we pray this in jesus almighty name amen
If I could have all of the. So uh, this is a good time to tell you that I changed the order of worship. <laughs> because I thought it was weird after the, uh, after the sermon to have the Apostles Creed. You know, it's like it kind of interrupts the flow. So we're going to do the Apostles Creed now, if you'd stand, please. It's not Chelsea's fault, it's my fault. Security, go ahead and escort him out. All right, let us, uh, let us recite what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Even the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now you may be seated. And now, if I could have all the children and tweens join me. He's always got his mommy's back, huh? Mommy's never wrong. All right, so today I want to talk to you about something very special, okay? And that is the Trinity. The Trinity means God is three. Can you hold up three fingers? Three. Oh, that's a fancy way to do that, Sawyer. Three in one. God the Father, God the Son, who is the Son? Jesus. Okay. And the Holy Spirit. In the book of John, Jesus is talking to his friends, and he tells them that even though he will not be with them for much longer, that he, they will not be alone. He said, I am sending the Holy Spirit to help you and to help them remember and think about all of the wonderful things he did while he was here. Think about your family, right? Who's in your family? She doesn't know. <laughs> Who's in your family? My mommy. And? Daddy. And? My baby brother. One more. My big brother. Yes. And we are all different people, right? Yeah, we are all very different. But we are all part of the same family. Just like how God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are all different, but they work together to be one. Just like how a family, your family loves and they help each other, right? Does mommy or daddy help you with things? Yeah. God loves us, and he is always there for us. Whether we are talking to our Father in heaven through prayer or learning stories about Jesus from the Bible or if we feel the Holy Spirit's comfort in our heart. Yes. All right, so let's pray. God, thank you for always being with us in all of your wonderful ways. Thank you for being there when we kneel for prayer. Thank you for being there through the stories of the Bible. And thank you for the way you were in our hearts. We love you and thank you for a wonderful day. Amen.
Please stand for the gospel reading. I'm reading from John 14, 25 through 31. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Bobby. Well, we are in our third week of the apologetic sermon series, and um, I don't know where we're going to go from here. We, we have tackled the Old Testament and the, and the New Testament God the first week, the second week. Last week, we talked about the issue of evil, and today we're going to talk about the, the Holy Trinity, and these are things that, that we have to be adept in explaining because there will be people who question that. Uh, the atheists already uh, do that, and, and so uh, we have to be ready to defend our faith. That's what apologetics really is. And so today we tackle the Trinity, and the, and the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but that does not mean it's not, it, it doesn't mean it's not true, of course. And so we will be uh, looking um, at that today. And hopefully this will leave us in a, in a good place when we get done. So, let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. I, I ask for your help um, delivering your word. Holy Spirit, come. Come anoint me, Holy Spirit. Not, not so that I'm special, but so that your word uh, goes forth to all of your hearers who have hearts and ears to receive. We pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, when it comes to Christianity, one of the, difficults, uh, one of the difficulties in understanding is the Trinity. We get to the Trinity and we're like, wait a minute, that's, that's three different gods. In fact, the Muslims will say that we are polytheists. We are worshipers of many gods. We know that's a gross misunderstanding of it, but they are monotheists as we are monotheist meaning one mono one theist god we are monotheists now the interesting thing about that claim is that one of the one of the major core tenets of islam is called the shahada and the shahada says there is no god but god muhammad is his prophet and so we can um, discuss Allah at a later date, whether that is the God of the Bible or not. I don't believe Allah is the God of the Bible. Now, the Jews uh, do not recognize Jesus as, as divine. They also obviously then don't uh, recognize the Holy Spirit, but they do, uh, they do uh, trace their God back to Abraham because... If they didn't, we'd be in trouble because we came out of the, uh, of the Jewish religion. So uh, there's that. But the Trinity is something that, that is perplexed folks for, for, for centuries. And even though the word is not in Scripture, it's nowhere found in Scripture. It doesn't mean it's not true because for the last 1,800 years, it has been used by Christians, that term, the father of the church, he's known as the father of the church, Tertullian, back in 213, 213, that's before any of you were born. Uh, 
Even you, Betty, weren't around then, yeah. In 213, that's 1,800 years ago. And, and Tertullian, he first used the term Trinity. Hey, you know, I like how one, I found one theologian I really like. He puts it this way. If the Trinity is Christianity's most unique, defining, incomprehensible, and awesome mystery. Incomprehensible, unique, defining, awesome mystery. It is the, he continues, it is the revelation of who our almighty creator actually is, not just a God, but an infinite being existing in eternity as three co-equal, infinite persons, consubstantial, meaning of one substance, yet distinct. An infinite being existing in eternity as three co-equal infinite persons, consubstantial yet distinct. So we have three separate persons, but one God. And that confuses people. And many people have tried analogies. We've had, we've had the water analogy. That one is used a lot. Water can exist as a solid, liquid, or gas. The problem with that, though, is it promotes modalism. Modalism means that God acts as the Holy Spirit when he needs to act as the Holy Spirit. He comes to earth as Jesus when he needs to come to earth as Jesus, which happened 2,000 years ago. And then when he's the Father, he's the Father. So he just switches out of these modes, which is not biblical. That's not biblical. So we, we know that that God just doesn't turn on the Holy Spirit to be the Holy Spirit or turn on Jesus to be Jesus or turn on the Father to be the Father. That's modalism and that is uh, anti-biblical, unbiblical. And then the, the other one, uh, which, which is kind of, is the sun, S-U-N, the big, that big orange ball that we've been seeing consistently for a change in, in our sky after all the rain we had. And so people will say, well, you know, you've got the sun, that's, that's the Father, and then the rays are Jesus, and then the heat is the Holy Spirit. But again, that, that borders on modalism, right? It, it's, it, it just doesn't do it justice. I think the only thing that really does it justice is what's on the front of your bulletin. Now, I didn't invent that, but if you look, go ahead and take a look at the front of your bulletin, you will see what I'm talking about. This is the best... Uh, it's not an analogy, right? But it's the best graph, if you will, graphic of you, if you will, of what we're talking about when it comes to the Trinity. The Trinity is God in three persons. The Father is God, but He's not the Holy Spirit or the Son. Jesus is God, but He's not the Holy Spirit or the Father. And the Holy Spirit is God, but He's not the Father or the Son. And if you're wrestling with this, there's a term that we have for you. Normal. Or normal. It's okay. But I think Scripture is a good place to go, obviously. And we see, we see the, the Trinity even in the beginning when God said, let us make man in our image back in Genesis 1 he said let us that that pronoun there that plural pronoun let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth except mosquitoes because I don't know where those came from but anyways to ask God about that, you know, mosquitoes, like uh, everything seems to have, every, every little piece of nature seems to have its part, but then there's mosquitoes. And down here, you know, you have mosquitoes that you could put leashes on, they're so big. Like I said, I had one, I saw one on the golf course the other day, I could have put a leash and made it, his, made it my pet. We'll have a mosquito sermon some other time. Anyways, Anyways, let us. Who is us? That's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know, also in Genesis we see, the, and we had a baptism this morning in, in, in the first service, the Spirit 
hovers over the waters. We see the Holy Spirit right in the beginning of Scripture. Now, the Holy Spirit, I want to I want to get a, give give a quick um, quick lesson on the Holy Spirit because this is what we've been talking about in our Acts Bible study. The Holy Spirit did not come to indwell, live inside of people until the New Testament times, but in the Old Testament times. He, he would come upon people. He would give people power. But he didn't indwell until, well, the first time we see that is Jesus breathing the Holy Spirit into his disciples. I believe it's in John 20. And so when we, we come to faith in Christ, we're given the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. Now, sometimes we're what we would call baptized with the Holy Spirit or filled with the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit comes upon. I, I prefer power coming upon us or filling of the Holy Spirit. And that, that happens whenever we need it. But we're always indwelt with the Holy Spirit. So there's a quick lesson on what we've been talking about. You've been missing out on if you haven't been there at our Acts Bible study. A lot of you in here have been there. It's been, it's been a good study. There's a shameless plug for that. Now, speaking of baptisms, Jesus' baptism was, was awesome. It was awesome because it portrayed the Holy Spirit in, in maybe the clearest point, but in the clearest part of Scripture. There, there might not be any other part of Scripture that shows the Trinity as clearly as Jesus' baptism. Let me read from you Matthew 3, 16, 17. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. What a clear picture we have there. We, we have Jesus in the flesh getting baptized. We have the Holy Spirit descending like a dove. So there's two members of the Trinity, and then we hear the very voice of the Father himself. I would suggest to you, if there is somebody that's having trouble with the Trinity, to go to Matthew 3, 16, 17 and say, here it is. Here's a beautiful portrayal of our three-in-one God. And then the passage that Bobby read a few moments ago, John 14. Now, John 14 also has my go-to verse in it, right? John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But we're a little past that in 25. He's, he's talking to his disciples, and you have to understand that he is going to go away soon. He's no longer going to be with them on a consistent basis. In fact, we know what happens. He is crucified buried, dead, and he's risen, and then he appears as the risen Savior, some. But then he ascends, and he ascends from where? He ascends from the Mount of Olives. We learn that in Acts. By the way, when Jesus returns the second time, not talking about the rapture, because the rapture, he's not going to return. He's coming in the air. But the second time he returns, he will return from the same place that he left, the Mount of Olives. So, if somebody says, well, I think he's coming to, to Beaumont, you say, well, no, he, when he returns, he'll, he's going to be returning to Jerusalem in the Mount of Olives. You know, because there's lots of people out there that say Jesus is coming back to Beaumont, right? <laughs> but it's not to be, this is not to be confused with the rapture, because the rapture is not considered his second coming, because he's... He's catching us up in the air. We're caught up in the air. So, here, so here's Jesus comforting his disciples, though, getting back on track with John 14. He says, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, with whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Isn't that interesting? But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. And he continues, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives 
do I give to you? Let your hearts not be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away and will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I'm going to the Father for the Father's greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place so that when it does take place, you may believe. And then he mentions how the ruler of the world, Satan, is, is going to come and govern the world. And he says, he has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. So Jesus is essentially saying, I'm not going to be with you anymore, but you are going to be fine. In fact, you might be better off. And, and they've got to be thinking, what on earth are you talking about? But here's what Jesus is talking about. He is saying, look, you know my father, you know me. Well, there's a third person in the Godhead the Holy Spirit, the helper, the advocate. He's going to come to live inside you. So right now, the wisdom is outside of you because it's in me, it's in the Father. But now the wisdom is going to be in you. He's going to teach you all things that you need to know. He, he is going to be able to remind you of things. And of course, we know the Holy Spirit does much more than what's just presented here. The Holy Spirit's the convictor of our sins. He is our GPS. He, he, he's many, many things. But he is the third person of the Trinity. He's not an it. He, he is a he, the third person of the Trinity. And so he's saying, look, you're, you're going to be fine because you're going to have the third person of the Godhead in you. Right now, all this godly wisdom is outside of you. So you're going you're gonna to be just fine. But I, I imagine the disciples had to be confused about that. Friends, the, 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 the doctrine of the Trinity is, can be one that can be divisive. There's been issues throughout the entire history of the Christian church with it. But you know, the core aspects of the Trinity are clearly given in Scripture. Very clearly, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. There are three separate persons in one God. That is clearly, clearly in Scripture. That's the biblical doctrine of the Trinity, if you will. Now, are there side issues? Are there maybe what we would call theological molehills where it's like, well, there's some mystery surrounding the Trinity. Yes, there's some mystery surrounding the Trinity, of course. But, but we can't turn those molehills into mountains. We have to focus on the fact that the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. They're three separate but equal of, of the same substance of God. But there is some mystery to it. But I think we'd be better off served by focusing on how great our God is and how his ways are higher than our ways. And I want to leave you with Paul's words to the Romans in chapter Romans 11, 33, 34, which basically says this, because God's nature is so infinitely higher than any of us, any human that's ever lived. And Paul writes, Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? How unsearchable. How unsearchable his judgments. The depth of his riches, the wisdom and knowledge of God. We have an awesome God. We have a three-in-one God. And I say praise be to God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for being a Trinitarian God. Lord, we, we struggle sometimes with the concepts, but we know 
we know what the Bible says. We know through our own experience. We know through others' experience that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and that Jesus came and died and, and rose and then ascended to, the, to, your, to sit next to you in the throne room. And we know, Father, that you are in control. And so we know that the Trinity exists despite the fact that it, that word isn't in Scripture. Lord, we, we thank you that we can understand this to the degree that you want us to understand it. I lift up anyone who's struggling with this, Lord, that, they would, that you would put an end to their struggle so that they can see very clearly how you operate as a three-in-one God. We thank you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Before we, before we say the benediction, I want to invite the Pellegrin family down as they're going to unite with our church, Veronica and Trey and their kids. Come on down. They've already filled out the questionnaire and gave the hair sample and the blood sample, so we got all that. Uh, we, got, we got that. Come on. Come on down. And um, so no problems there. They passed the background check and... We got the FBI. We, they're good to go. So now they just have to do this. But we're glad to, glad to. I'm glad to know you, and I'm glad we're glad to have you. And I just have a question for you, and that is, do you promise to uphold this church through your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness? Amen. That was the right answer. Let's clap for them. And uh, we have a bunch of friendly people here. Uh, you probably, uh, yeah, Daddy. Okay, yeah. And so, what are the what are the names of your children here? We Willow here, Roland over here, Eloise here, and the one with no energy here is Sawyer. Okay, <laughs> bottle up and sell that energy for a million dollars. We we'd buy it. All right. Well. Um, we, I hope that you will meet them and, and greet them um, uh, with, uh, after the service, and we're glad to have you all. We're glad to have you all. It's a great church, and, and uh, we, we love our kids here, too, so we'll, they'll uh, have no problems uh, fitting in, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, you got two claps. They usually don't clap twice. They clap twice for you guys. That's pretty good. All right, let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for our new members. Help them to fit in, Lord, and help help myself and, and all of us to uh, make efforts to make sure that they um, that they uh, have a home here and they that they have they, they can get plugged into where they need to get plugged in. And Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being a three in one God. Let us go out and shine our light for the world so that they can see Jesus in us. They could see you in us and the Holy Spirit in us. We pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.